This is Dave E3OI and this is an update video for my uh, Born Again uh, LBS uh, project. And uh, so far I've uh, created this backplane here and tested it and I got a lot of um, oscillations uh, with it primarily due to the way the uh, uh, connectors were laid out and as well I had uh, the input and output traces very close together for my amplifiers. Then I moved to this amplifier, this backplane design here where you've got uh, signals coming in one side, signals coming out, and you've got the module plugs in across uh, the two uh, connectors there and I had a lot uh, better results with this uh, board. So I've moved on to my third design here which is uh, basically an upgrade of that where I've got uh, bi-directional amplifiers one for uh, receive one for transmit same thing here one for receive one for transmit the transmit section has not been populated yet I'm just doing some testing with the receive so I have got on these amps I've got you can see the two Mars I've got two Mars 6SM's uh, mimic amplifiers and uh, this is uh, producing about uh, 30 dB of gain uh, 30 to 40 dB of gain and uh, I've got two of the amplifiers and sandwich in between is my crystal filter amp so with this last design when I put uh, and with this design as well once I had this configuration uh, I sometimes got some oscillation so I thought I'd go right straight to the punch and I'd test this configuration to see whether it's uh, stable so in this video I'll be going through some tests uh, to check the stability of this uh, backplane design. In this test I'm, I'm going to test the gain for the first uh, bi-directional amp there. I've got it connected to my tracking generator and my tracking generator is showing approximately uh, 38 dB of gain and uh, it's fairly flat right across and uh, it looks as if the the roll-off point here is about uh, 1.5 megahertz which is perfect because that's a uh, that means that uh, the 80 meter band uh, will be accommodated by that amplifier in this configuration I've got both um, bi-directional amplifiers connected uh, in parallel in series here and I'm going to check the gain across uh, uh, each of them and here's what it looks like on my tracking generator now we're seeing a little bit of jaggedness there because I had to introduce a lot more attenuation uh, and as you can see I'm seeing uh, roughly about 50 almost 51 dB of gain there uh, which is uh, pretty good for both amps uh, connected back to back and uh, there does not appear to be any oscillations. In this configuration I'm just testing uh, the uh, crystal filter alone and that's connected to my tracking gen uh, generator. I have to supply power to this board because this board has, uh, has some pin diodes here and here and that uh, switches between receive and transmit so I need to supply some uh, voltage to the board to turn those pin diodes on. So currently that's what it looks like and I'm seeing a loss, uh, insertion loss of minus 25 dB and uh, that seems uh, fairly large and I'll compare that um, with the uh, actual LBS um, uh, crystal filter to see how that compares to it. Now there is a little bit of oscillation here at the uh, at low fre frequencies, and that's creeping in. But uh, uh, um, I don't think that's going to be a problem. And worse comes worse, if it does turn out to be a problem, I could use uh, uh, smaller bypass caps to uh, to attenuate anything at that low frequency. This is the original LBS, and what I'd like to do now is I'd like to compare 
the performance of the crystal filter of the original LBS with the uh, crystal filter I built as part of the new backplane design. So what I've done here is I have uh, added two jumpers here and another jumper here which bypasses the amplifier stages and uh, is connected directly to the crystal filter and I've got it connected up to my spectrum analyzer and so I'm just characterizing the filter itself and if we go over and look at the spectrum analyzer we see that uh, there is a peak here at 4.92 uh, megahertz and uh, the insertion loss is approximately minus 23, 24 uh, dB and with the prior uh, filter I built uh, in the back plane I was seeing uh, I think about tw minus 25 uh, dB so it's uh, still fairly close and the additional insertion loss could very well be from the uh, pin diodes that I've put in place there and I'm getting a little bit of uh, attenuation uh, from those uh, uh, pin diodes. In this configuration I've got the crystal filter sandwiched between the two bi-directional amps and uh, I've got it powered up and connected to the tracking generator so let's see what the tracking generator is showing and the tracking generator is showing uh, one large peak at uh, approximately 4.9 megahertz with a gain of approximately about 48 dB uh, there is a hump here around uh, at marker number two which is at uh, 17 uh, dB so I'm seeing from the peak to here about 30 dB of gain. So if we kind of think about this uh, you'll see these values make sense. We're seeing approximately 48 dB. Uh, if each amp, uh, each bi-directional amp is uh, approximately 37 dB of gain and I've got an insert, insertion loss of about 25 dB I should be seeing about 49 dB of gain and I'm seeing roughly about uh, 48 uh, dB so that's pretty darn close to what uh, um, that should be. In this configuration instead of having the backplane connected to the spectrum analyzer I've got it connected to the uh, Park uh, Homebrew SNA and uh, the way I've got this configured is the output from the SNA is going into my variable attenuator which is adding 40 dB of attenuation to signal and that's being fed into the input uh, of the backplane and the output is coming out and being fed into the input of uh, the SNA. So right here I've got it set to frequency generator mode and uh, I've got it uh, tuned to the center frequency of the uh, crystal and if I was to change the frequency here that's being put out you'll see you'll see the gain going down then as I come back into the pass band you'll see the gain going up So I have done a, a previous uh, sweep of this and I'm just not going to repeat it. I'm just going to pull up the sweep. It's a filter sweep and I'm just going to display that. And there's the sweep and if I was to cursor over I could go over to the center of the peak. and it's showing it's approximately 4914446 uh, hertz and it's showing that the uh, gain is roughly about uh, uh, 23 uh, dB so if we if I knew what the output from uh, the generator is with the attenuation I could figure out what the gain of uh, the uh, backplane is in its present configuration. 
In this configuration, I have got my SI5351 signal generator uh, connected to the input of the board and the output of the board is going to the tracking generator and uh, I've done a, a prior video on my uh, frequency generator and I have got uh, this output here is putting out roughly about minus 69 uh, it's, it's not quite exactly that it's probably a little bit higher but it's of that order it's uh, of the order of uh, 60 or minus 60 or minus 70 uh, dBm so it's being fed in, into the uh, boards and the output is being fed here and uh, um, what I'm going to be demonstrating is I can change the frequency here I'm changing the frequency by 10 Hertz and what I can do is I could tune in to get the actual peak there so my marker 1 there uh, well currently right now my bandwidth is set to 1 kilohertz so I've got 1 kilohertz resolution and uh, right now it's saying the peak is at uh, 4.914 uh, megahertz and it's about minus 5 uh, dBm strength. Now as I decrease the frequency you'll see the peak starting to come down. So I can bring it back up and get to the maximum then once I get to the other side of the filter of the pass band of the filter you'll see the uh, you'll see it starting to come back down again and you can actually see the little humps that w that the uh, SNA had. You'll see it going up and down and then finally it's coming down. So you can kind of see that there is actually uh, two humps and I'm sure if I was to crank down the resolution uh, on the uh, the SA here, the spectrum analyzer, I'd be able to see those humps but right now because my bandwidth is set to one kilohertz uh, those humps are being averaged out. With this backplane I'm getting much better results uh, than the other two backplane designs I have so I'm going to continue working on this. Um, my next step is going to be putting in a mixer and a bandpass filter as well as adding in a CPU board uh, at the end here which will provide the uh, uh, BFO and uh, local oscillator for the various mixers. That concludes this video. Thank you for watching.